Brother! Help me! Long live the king. I'm gonna need a bunch of things to get this working. I need materials, I need a battery, I need driving motors, and I need flipping motors, or a flipping motor, because I'm gonna target a flipping mechanism. I'm also gonna need a microcontroller that has some sort of wireless capability to connect to my PS3 controller. On top of all that, I need electronics and I need manufacturing equipment. The good thing is, I have most of this stuff and the rest of it, I need to order. So, I'll see you in a bit. I've made two designs for this thing, the elephant and the hammerhead. The elephant is the one I made first, and it focuses on a longer, bulkier design, so I can fit all my components in there as I wish. Well, it's all looking good, so let's go to 3D. Oh, okay, okay, that's gonna take too long, right. New design, the hammerhead. Okay, this thing is better because it focuses on width as opposed to length, which gives it a lower center of gravity, which is gonna make it a more effective battle bot. As well as that, it's a much shorter print time. So that's what I'm gonna target. Before I go any further, I've got to make some choices on the type of motors and microcontroller I want to use. This is a continuous rotation servo, and it's great because it's compatible with lots of different types of microcontrollers. I'm going to target this one. This is an ESP32, and it has a Wi-Fi Bluetooth combo module. The beauty of this module is I can make a Bluetooth connection between anything else that has the module as well, such as this PS3 controller. These controllers have something called a MAC address, which by using some shenanigans can be connected to a microcontroller and send signals to it. On my first connection, this is what I got. What? By fully learning Egyptian hieroglyphics, I was able to translate my code so that now when I move my controller, it puts an output that is in readable English. The entire point of hooking up this PS3 controller is so that I can control the car without having to have a wired connection to it so that it can move like I want it to. That means that I need a way to drive the car, so I've now set it up so that when I move the thing forward, it is responsive, it goes. So if you can imagine that being in a car, it will work. Don't know why I'm getting this sort of like leakage current or something. I'll get back to you once I fix that. With the operation of my control system verified, I can go about printing my chassis, my wheels, and my lid, which means 3D printing montage. Bird on the window. Wow, guys, look at my case for my chassis. There's absolutely no warping. I don't even know how this printed right. With the two main functionalities of the project developed, now we can upscale the system. So enjoy this montage, which is probably gonna take me like three hours to make. You're going to love this. Trust me. What you're seeing now is my normal state. This is a Super Saiyan. And this, this is what is known as a Super Saiyan that has ascended past a Super Saiyan. Or you could just call this a Super Saiyan 2. And this is to go even further beyond. Come on, push it. Yeah. With that out of the way, now let's talk about the flipper. So what we want is we want to take this big chunky servo and we want it so that when it rotates, it moves some sort of flipper arm that can flip stuff for me and be my method of attack. My first idea is to target this gear and pinion method as seen here. So you've got this gear and it sits on the horn of the servo motor. And when it spins, it can move a linear gear, also known as a pinion, which should cause my flipper to move up. Let's see that in practice. I'm sorry, little one. My design worked. When I rotated the servo, it moved the pinion in a linear motion. But theoretically, that pinion and gear method works really well, but practically not so much. When you move up the gear using the servo motor, when it rotates, 
the whole flipper rotates, which is good. But the pinion, the way I designed it, is connected to the flipper and not the pivot point, which means that the pinion moves as the gear moves and it moves away from the gear, meaning this won't work. Instead of that convoluted ass design, I've just attached the flipper to the rotating part of the servo. I've also wrote some code to get the firing and reload of the flipper in order. Sometimes when I try to get this thing to drive, the Bluetooth connection on the controller cuts out, and I think that's because when servos are driving current from the battery, they're dropping the voltage of the battery, which is moving this circuit outside of the operating voltage of the Bluetooth module. I, when I do this, and then when I try it again, it doesn't work. So to solve that, I'm just gonna overcharge the battery. Right, that's a bad idea. Instead, I added these linear voltage regulators and I edited the software a little bit. So this is what it looks like when I move the analog stick of the PS3 controller. Now, instead of it just going to one to 100%, it can go incrementally from 1% to 100% speed wise. Also, I now made it go backwards as well. So that's a forward movement and a backwards movement. Now I want to start making the car able to do some direction stuff. So... So my initial plan revolved around this thing I made. So what the idea was is that I would have these driving motors on my battle ball and I would have this that sat at the front. And what I could do is I could use this servo motor to turn this little contraption here and that would hopefully move my ball in the direction that this servo dictated. Then I remembered this comment on one of my older videos. You only need two motors to steer. Er, uh, actually I was thinking for more dynamic steering. <laughs> Wrong. Actually, I'm just gonna take that guy's suggestion. So I rewrote the code a little bit. And now, when I move it in certain ways, I can actually rotate it. With all parts assembled, now it's time to take it to the test track. To complete the track, the battle ball will have to go through this duct tape and body this deodorant, pass the robotic hand, use its flipper to turn over this bat or big ass heavy bottle, drop down here, survive that drop, and control its speed, and then finally crash into the pillow. Up or I will cry myself to sleep. Also, I'll see you guys next month. Goodbye.